Eamon Khan here, four seconds out with Dave Colwell ringside. We just witnessed the crowning of and the new British middleweight champion, Brad Pauls. Uh, emphatic finish in the end. How did you see the fight? I thought it was fantastic. What a great fight. I've come down here, I've got a night off. I've come down here. I was here for the first one, actually. Um, and this beats that. You know, the first one was a cracking fight, but but what a fight that was. Both men showed a lot in that. Heaney has got some massive balls, man, because that was very, very tough for him. He took a lot of hammer in there. I thought he got off to a really good start, first three rounds or so. Um, but then Pauls, after that right hand, that Peter right hand that put Heaney over, he just took over and, and it was a it was a really tough, it was really tough going for Heaney. But then I don't know if it was round nine, he, he, I think he caught Pauls with some good body work, slowed him right up and you think, oh, hang on a minute, last couple of rounds are going to be interesting here. Yeah? But then Brad Pauls just took it up again and what a finish, what a finish. Well deserved, you know, uh, well deserved to be um, picking up those tiles. Word on the crowd, because I don't think I've ever heard a fighter lose. And normally what you see, I don't want to name any names, but normally what you yeah. see is you see the crowd filter out and they yeah. leave. But Brilliant. I've never seen a crowd stay in and chant the man, even though yeah. he's lost. Brilliant. Singing him out there, chanting his name. That That's true fans. That's great fans. Do you know what that says as well? That's that, I bet I bet Nathan Heaney knows every one of those people in them stands. Because like like you said, normally when, when people gravitate towards a fighter and start following a fighter, supporting a fighter, yes, the fans but then when they get beat or whatever it's time to get off and they shoot off as they, as they do them lot were there just just singing his name and that's nice for him because he, he gave it absolutely everything he got beat but he gave it everything he got you know he had nothing left at the end of that fight and and i think as fans and you know I count myself as a as a boxing fan as fans that's all you want is you want you want the fighters to give give everything they've got and sometimes they win sometimes they lose Dave, let's get to some boxing talk in the wider boxing sphere. First of all, next weekend sees Joe Joyce versus Derek Chisora. You've worked closely with Derek Chisora in the past. Do you feel that you can wind back some of the years and get the victory over Joyce, who for some feel like time's now to get him off the back of the, the two Zhang defeats? Could he? Yes, he could. Because, you, I mean, one thing you say about Joe Joyce is he's not physically hard to hit. Um, and... If Derek cashed in one of those all run rights, who knows what happens? Um, you know, he's, he's got a good left up to the body. He's got a great all run right. Who knows? But Joy, when, you, when you see him in there, Joyce is a much bigger man. For me, this is a fight where it's a case of who's got the most left. You know, it's not, it's not one of my favourite fights out there. I understand why it's happening. Um, and I've heard it's, it's Derek's last, um, last fight at the O2. I'm happy to hear that. Um, it'll be a bit of an emotional night for him because he also has been a fantastic home for him. You know, the fans have always packed out the arena. The fans have always supported him there. And, and you know, I hope they do the same again next week. Um, and yeah, uh, I just I just hope that everything goes well for him. A couple of fighters in the mix now for the Canelo sweepstakes, trying to get that big uh, fight night with Canelo. Yeah, one of those, uh, one of those nights. Uh, one of the leading contenders is Chris Eubank Jr. Yeah. How do you feel about if Chris Eubank Jr. was to get the fight? Fair play to him. Cannot, listen, anyone that's going to get the Canelo paycheck is a game changer, life changer. Listen, Eubank's rich anyway, and he's made millions himself anyway, so I suppose it's not the same effect as when it happens to somebody coming through like a Caleb plant or something like that. Um, but if he gets that shot, well done, well, well played. Fantastic management to get him that shot. Um, Flip side is, looking at it from judging on Canelo, Canelo can do what he wants because of Canelo and you look at his resume. But for me, as a boxing fan, Canelo fan, I would like him to, you know, there's, there's Benavidez out there. And it's like, come on, you know? You, I keep saying it, when Mayweather, people talk about Mayweather cherry picking opponents, or they all do it. But when Mayweather saw a young, hungry heir apparent coming through which was Canelo and Mayweather was old at that time he fought Canelo you know Canelo should kind of return the favour to boxing and do the same and you know if he beats Benavidez amazing if he doesn't then he's, he's you know he's boxing and he's, he's passed the torch on so to speak but I dare say he'll probably probably you know 
the figures that they've talked about with that, I don't, I just don't think that happens. If the fight was to get made, bearing in mind some in the industry feel that Canelo might be slipping a bit, how it's big is the gap between the two? Because of, of age. Age, wear and tear. He's been a pro since he was 15 years old. So it's natural if he's if he's slipping. His punch output, his activity is not as not as not the same. I'm not talking about fight activity, but during the fight, his activity isn't the same as what it used to be. Obviously. You know, he changed his style as he got older, perhaps injuries, things like that, knocks and train things. It's more economical. Benavidez is high octane. You know, and, and he's got that. He's got the range. He's got the size. Throws a lot, a lot of punches. Um, Benavidez has got a real good shot in that fight. A real good shot in this, in this, uh, in, in this day and age of this version of Canelo. You know, you, you've got to say Benavidez has got a fantastic shot. And that's why we want to see the fight because I'm not saying Benavidez wins, but he has a great, great chance. Possibly better than anybody else around in, uh, at that weight. What about Eubank Jr.'s chance? I, I would, I would be, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. That's not being disparaging to Eubank Jr. It's like, look at who Eubank Jr. has been beat by. Look at you, you know, what what his resume is, his track record. It's not like he's, he doesn't look like he's getting better. He's not, he's not getting better. So, but was he anywhere near Canelo's level? The only thing is, is Canelo takes his eye off the ball and and thinks it's an easy job and then you know that gives anybody a chance boxing is littered with upsets i'm not going to say that you know he's, he's, he's got no chance of winning the fight but i'm going to say is, is if, if he beats him i will be shocked boxing is littered with upsets as you say but uh two people who used to be upset with each other in the past seem to have joined forces for, joined forces to the point now where they're going to be chums and they're going to be sharing the same broadcast if we believe to be the reports saying that frank warren is close to finalizing a deal with DAZN. Uh, what's your reaction to that? And just bearing in mind as well, too, the context of it, it means if that is the case, it would leave one promoter left that has a terrestrial slash cable TV, a traditional way of watching TV, of them being broadcasted, whereas the others will be featured on an app. Yeah. Um, I think DAZN, when they came about, they, they talked about game changed. Mm. And a couple of years in, everyone was taking a piss out of them, saying that, you know, it's is a flop and it's this and but they keep keep on pulling out the socks and if this is the case it's speculation it's obviously there's talks and things like that a lot of moving parts still going um but if this is the case and number one it's huge because there's no longer boxing on tnt or you know unless somebody else gets a gig i can't see it myself um number two it's huge because like you said everybody's on the same same platform apart from one um what does that do for boxing? Um, I would say it should make fights easy to make. I know there's that relationship now because of, of Turkey Al Sheikh and what he's done bringing the two promotional heads together. Um, so we're getting those fights made. But the fact that, you know, in the past it's, there's been the negotiations of, oh, if there's a big fight, oh, who's, whose network is going to be shown on? We've got a contract to fulfill with our TV network. They've got a contract to fulfill with their TV network. That it, This removes that. The only thing is, is that, is that you know, you just got to hope that way that everybody now gets the zone and it works and they don't then just start hiking prices up and, and screwing the fans because they've got all the content for everybody. Do you know what I mean? Off everybody. Um, you know, and then there's then there's just there's just Sky, you know, and hopefully Sky stays in boxing because Sky is a mainstream. Those two are chums now. Frotch and AJ seem to be chums now. It's all a little bit sick. Oh, uh, yeah, apparently I think Frotch and AJ hashed it out over uh, in private and uh, we might be seeing AJ on Frotch on fighting. <laughs> That's what I call done it. That's what I call does it. He, he slags people off and then gets them on his channel for views. He's fucking genius, that man. <laughs> I didn't know that. Playing chess while we're all playing checkers. Uh, lastly, look, I'm going to change uh, the the tone slightly. Don't know if you saw Scott Fitzgerald. It seemed like he was going to get a comeback, but that now seems to be off the table, and it seems to have slipped again. Just... Um, it's sad. Listen, it's sad. It, but I see people tweeting, you know, and tweeting Eddie and tweeting other people saying, "Oh, help him, help." He's been plenty of people have tried to help him. People saying, "Oh, his family should intervene." He's, I know his family has tried to intervene. But the problem is, is 
we can all advise our kids once you become an adult you can't really tell your kids what to do you can only advise them and hope that they they go right the right way when you're a friend when you're a promoter when you can only offer help so many times if people don't want to take the help or aren't able to to stay committed to to, to change then unfortunately this is what's going to happen and and, and I'm, I'm gutted because scott fitzgerald was an absolute fantastic talent you know outstanding talent and to see how his life's gone forget about his career listen there's a lot more to boxing than a lot more to life than boxing you know it, boxing's only that much of, of your life you know please god you've got a long life afterwards and to look at what's happened to him for the rest of his life now away from that one night that last night he had in boxing it's a travesty and it's it's you know i'm i'm, I'm gutted for him but there's only him that can change things he's got um, he's got to want to change and want to do things the right way enough um and that's the only time that it's gonna you know things are gonna change and, and get better for him it was i believe that there thank you so much for speaking the seconds out i could speak to you for longer but it's a cute four minutes so Thanks, let you go Thanks, appreciate it